guys, it's Alex with BF Vintage. So we were still feeling the itch, you know how it goes. And so we ended up in Scottsdale, Arizona at another Goodwill. And by we, I mean me and my bestie boo, Lisa. <laughs> so we're gonna go and see if we can find anything for my Etsy shop. So let's do it. So the first thing I noticed were these swans. They kind of reminded me of a swan we saw at another thrift store. Very mid-century looking, but actually made in the 80s. Uh, so decided that even though they were likely vintage, just really wasn't feeling it. I don't know. And then we saw this armadillo. I thought it was super cute, but I couldn't quite make out the bottom. And actually in the video, we can see it a little bit better than we could in person. And I think it said something Inca, but I wasn't 100% sure. And maybe it just said ink for like an incorporation, but I couldn't figure it out. And then we saw this sweet little man and it was so unfortunate that his face was all beat up because um, he was in fact vintage and I have seen something similar before. So um, yeah, looks like he's cutting up some fish to make sushi, I would imagine. And then I saw this, guys. I was so excited. It's so kitschy and sweet. I was checking the bottom to see if there was any label. There wasn't. But if there was something about the quality of this. I thought it was a mouse at first, but it turns out it's actually a chihuahua. <laughs> Which is adorable. It's not something you see uh, very often in figurines, specifically. Lots of other types of dogs, but not chihuahuas. So he was definitely going with us, even though he had some little chippy chips on his ears. Because he was just too darling. Then I saw these turkey salt and pepper shakers, but I felt like they looked like they likely weren't vintage. Um, just something about the fading of the paint didn't, didn't look like fading that I would normally see on a vintage piece. I could be wrong. But I was going with my gut, and since there were no labels either, I just decided to leave it. And then I saw this box. It was a ceramic box. It looked like a cabin, but it was a hobbyist piece, and I just didn't feel like the subject matter was there. And then I saw this purple art glass lamp, and it did say made in Taiwan, but it was very lightweight, so I put it back. Next, I found this bowl. And it did say made in Hong Kong on the bottom, but I just felt like it was really beat up on the bottom. So not up to my standards, unfortunately. Looking through the clear glass here, saw this and thought, ooh, this looks nice. And then picked it up and realized it was plastic. <laughs> Man, I hate when that happens. It gets me every time. Next, we see this art glass bowl and I'm kicking myself. I probably sh still should have gotten it, but I just felt like the quality wasn't there for me and you could see where it was blown, hand blown at the bottom there. I like to see it smooth. Uh, and I was also just not sure if people would like this kind of thing as just a statement piece. Um, then I saw these guys. I guess I was meant to find turkey shakers because these are actually vintage. And they're in this really vibrant orange. They're in perfect condition. I didn't find any chips. And the they said made in Japan on the bottom. And the part where the salt and the pepper comes out is on the front of the chest. So most of the time you see it on the tops. So I really liked that because that made it unique. And uh, yeah, I just thought they were really sweet. Like their little... I don't know what that gobbly thing is called. I call it the gobbly thing, <laughs> but it was in that really vibrant red color. Um, so I obviously had my bestie inspect to make sure there were no chippy chips and there weren't. So it came with us. Next, I saw this vase or sorry, not vase. What am I saying? This plate, the serving plate. And I loved the color. It had that kind of amberish brownish tint to it. But upon further inspection, it appeared to be pressed glass and not etched. 
and also it did have a chip. So we put that one back. Strike it out again. <laughs> Obviously I have to dig through the wood, I always do. And I found this framed piece of art. At first I was wondering why it looked so faded and then I realized, oh, that's the back. Um, and it was very intricate, really beautiful. I believe it was painted, um, but I didn't know a whole lot about it. And I wasn't sure if it, if it was something that would be people would be interested in. Um, so even though it was in really good condition, I did end up putting it back. <laughs> she wins. Dang you! <laughs> and then I saw this Delft plate and I was trying to determine what what it was and it turns out it was Windsor Ware and I, I really probably should have gotten it at, because there was probably some resale value there but I just ended up putting it back. I don't know. I guess I was super picky. And then I saw these depression glass mugs and they did say France on the bottom, which is one indication uh, to me that they are depression glass. And they were stunning. Um, I was really excited to find them. They were in really good condition. I didn't see any chips or scratches. They have that kind of frosted glass. But once we ran comps, we realized that for almost five bucks each, that was not going to give us any room for profit on our, you know, for reselling. So we left them there for someone else to find, for someone who wants to keep them as a collector. And that was everything we got, just two pieces. But they are darling. All right, guys, so we ended up spending about $10 and found just two cute little items. One was that mouse, which was adorable. So cute. <laughs> and then the other one was, oh my gosh, this turkey, is me. The pepper. turkeys, the turkeys. Oh! Anyways, so we love those. We are here in Scottsdale, Arizona at a place called Antique Trove. I haven't been here in many years, so I'm excited to check it out. And I got my partner in crime, my bestie boo, Lisa. Say hi, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go see if we can find anything uh, for our shop. All right, guys. So the very first thing I noticed was this cowhide bag and I had just never seen anything like it. It it just looks so unique. Um, it turns out it was a carper bag, which I am not familiar with, just to be totally honest. But also it was from the Victorian area, which I was surprised to find. But um, maybe I'm just not as familiar with Western type of items from that era. Um, although I'm not really sure there was the Wild West at the time. Anyways, I'm going to stop. I found this leaf gla art glass and oh my gosh, it was just stunning. It had so many different colors in it, in great condition. It was priced perfectly for a collector. Same with this ruffled vase. I loved how it was dark at the bottom and lighter at the top. Um, but it was, I believe, 65 and I didn't see room for reselling for me. And then we saw this Hobnob Blanco glass, which was really, really pretty. Uh, but again, it was, it was priced at 95 definitely too high for me. And then I saw this gorgeous Viking glass plate. Um, I'm just starting to get familiar with Viking glass plates and serving dishes because those tend to be what I find in my area. I have I have yet to see Viking glass swung vase anywhere in Phoenix. So I'm very jealous of the people who find them on the East Coast. And then I saw this and I just thought it was gorgeous. It was made in Japan. At first I thought it might be Otagari, but it wasn't. There was just the one little part where the paint was coming off, but otherwise it was in great condition. I love that it was in the shell shape and it had that really nice shine to it. So we decided to take it with us. So it went in the basket. Our first item at the antique mall, yay! 
And then I found a chicken. Ha ha ha. My turn to win. <laughs> and then I saw this really pretty carnival glass bowl. And it, it caught my eye from really far away just because the iridescent shine to it was just everything. And I was inspecting it just to see what the condition looked like. It did have some spots where it seemed like it had been scratched or rubbed off. Um, but I, for $15, and then I, I believe there was even more of a discount at that booth. So I felt like it, it still had some profit there. Lisa and I were trying to decide if we felt like it was actually vintage or not. Um, I believe it still is but it may be newer. So maybe not quite as old as some of the other carnival glass that we've picked out. So it went in the basket. And next we see this cornucopia green mid-century uh, vase. And I really liked the design. It gave me a little bit of Art Nouveau vibes and I just thought it was in good condition and I liked the the dark green earthy color gate you know it would look great um, in somebody's home that maybe even has boho decor or mid-century decor you can kind of blend that together so uh, I liked the size of it and so it went in my went in my basket I keep saying cart because I'm used to the carts at Goodwill but <laughs> it went in my basket and I was really drawn to these vases up here, but I had trouble identifying them. So I decided to move along and I loved this booth. Oh my gosh, I could just spend forever in this booth. They had everything that I, I'm drawn to. Obviously these carnival glass uh, swung vases and they were priced right for a collector and they were in really good condition. Um, so I left those there. And then I saw these pirate ship shakers and they had really bright, vibrant retro colors. Uh, you know, makes me think of the 60s and 70s with the orange and the yellow. And they did say made in Japan on the bottom. We were looking to see if it, they had any chips and they didn't that we could find so i decided to take a chance on them because i just felt like maybe this is something that somebody else would gravitate towards because it's kind of unusual it's not something you see every day and um i love the retro vibrant colors so yeah decided to take those And then we saw this 1940s Japan pincushion. And honestly, I've never seen anything like it. It was so cool. Um, the cat was just really, really silly looking. You know, it had green polka dots and orange ears. And I don't know, I probably should have gotten it, but I felt like I couldn't really find a lot online about it. And so it made me a little bit nervous and uh, I'm, I'm regretting it, of course, but um, I thought mm, somebody else will take it home. Now we're passing a bunch of Lennox over here and I didn't film the part where I actually picked one up, but you'll see it in my basket later. They had a lot of nice Lennox. See, there it is in my basket. This is all the stuff we got, guys. We did really pretty good at the antique mall and we didn't even go through the whole mall. All right, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, we found quite a few things, actually. I think like four or five things. Uh, we spent about $35. And uh, I, would, I would say that my favorite item was definitely the uh, carnival glass bowl. It just, oh my gosh it was so shiny and pretty and I can't wait to research it to to find out you know when it was made and by whom and so yeah very excited about that so thanks for hanging out and we'll see you next time on BF Vintage.